Do you hear it? Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I noticed I haven't covered any werewolves in a while, and what better movie? An American Werewolf in London. This movie came out in 1981 and is a horror comedy. This film is often regarded as one of the best in the genre and is my personal favorite werewolf movie. It was written and directed by John Landis and on special effects makeup they had the legend Rick Baker, one of the best in practical effects I think and have mentioned some of his amazing resume before. The title An American Werewolf in London was a combination of two other movies, 1951's An American in Paris and 1935's Werewolf in London. The film stars David Naughton as David Kessler, Griffin Dune as Jack Goodman, Jenny Agutter as the nurse Alex Prince, and John Woodvine as Dr. Hirsch. Let's take a look at the lycanthropy in this movie, its tie-ins with demonic imagery, and the unique consequences of this curse. If you enjoy videos about vampires, werewolves, and other fantasy creatures, maybe hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. The movie begins with us following two American friends on a backpacking vacation in England, David and Jack. They are hitchhiking through East Proctor and get a ride from a sheep herder who drops them off on an empty road. The sun is just going down and the driver warns them to stick to the road and stay clear of the moors. Moors are usually pieces of semi-open land, so like a big piece of land but with not many trees on it. They walk and talk for a while before finding a pub, the Slaughtered Lamb. Jack is a bit put off by the name, and the sign has a bloody wolf's head. Jack is a bit hesitant to go in, but David insists. All right. But whatever happens, it's, it's your fault. fault. Right. All right, come on. Once the friends go inside, everyone in the bar suddenly stops what they're doing. They look at David and Jack like they aren't supposed to be there. The two begin talking about the strange symbol on the wall. Jack says it's a pentangle, a five-pointed star. It's used for witchcraft. Universal Studios said it's the mark of the Wolfman. He is referring to the use of the pentagram in the 1941 movie, The Wolfman, with Bela Lugosi. There isn't much folklore on werewolves involving pentagrams. It seems to have been made popular by the Wolfman in other films. However, unlike in the original Wolfman, in this film, the pentagram does not appear on any werewolf. Instead, in European folklore, it's actually used to repel evil. So what looks like something evil, candles and a pentagram, is actually used to keep them safe. After someone finishes telling a joke, Jack asks everyone in the bar, what's with the star on the wall? And everything goes silent. Things get very uncomfortable, and they take the hint and decide to leave. As they are leaving, the bartender says twice, you can't let them leave, with a worried voice. One man cuts her off and says, go, stay on the road, keep clear of the moors, and another man adds, beware the moon, lads. David and Jack head out from the slaughtered lamb, following the road. Back at the pub, they are arguing about letting them go. One man says, should the world know our business? It's murder then. Then murder it is. Some seem to want to help the friends, while others just want them to leave. One patron says they would think us mad, which is fair. Even if they told David and Jack about a werewolf, they probably wouldn't believe them. While the two are walking, suddenly they hear a harrowing noise in the darkness. Did you hear that? David remembers someone said beware the moon and stay on the road. Oops, they forgot to stay on the road. The bar patrons hear these noises as well and a concerned look washes over their faces. The bartender is worried about the Americans, while the others fearfully pretend they didn't hear anything. David suggests it could be a coyote, but Jack says there's no coyotes in England. Fun fact, England has no large predators like bears, large cats, or wolves. The apex predators in England are foxes, otters, owls, and eagles. This is because most of the predators were hunted to extinction in that area to protect livestock. That's why some countries in the UK have more sheep than people. Hey, wait a minute. We're lost. Oh shit. David and Jack decide to try to go back to the pub, but they quickly realize that they're lost in the dark. The loud groans and growls are getting closer, then circling them. Just as they thought they got away, the creature savagely attacks Jack, ripping him to pieces as he screams bloody murder and for David to help him. David, stricken with fear and adrenaline, began to sprint away as fast as he could but he realizes he has to help his friend, so he runs back to see Jack dead. Suddenly, the lichen returns to finish the job and kill David, but lucky for him, the townspeople had a change of heart. Just as the creature is about to kill David, several gunshots ring out, killing the werewolf. When I first watched this movie, I was confused why Jack looked different when David looks at him on the ground. 
But this isn't Jack. This is the werewolf who returned to human form after dying. Werewolves returning to human form after they die is pretty common in werewolf lore. David wakes up in the hospital and finds he's been there for two weeks. David spends a total of three weeks in the hospital and he spends a majority of that unconscious. When he finally awakes, Dr. Hirsch informs David that Jack is dead and a man from the American Embassy tells him the police want to interview him about what happened. David says that it was some kind of animal or wolf that attacked him, but the police insist it must have been a man as there was a man's body found and there was witnesses. David is confused by this because it was dark and no one could have seen what happened. The inspector's assistant does agree with David that it's unlikely that two young men would be overpowered in such a way by one man. But the inspector shuts him down and says the matter is closed. However, David knows what he saw, and no man could do that to Jack. After being attacked by the lichen, David begins experiencing strange dreams and nightmares. In one dream, he is running through the forest hunting prey. In another, he finds himself in a hospital bed with a monstrous face. And this one is really bizarre. These scary looking wolf people dressed in Nazi uniforms break into David's house, kill his family, and cut his throat. David wakes up and Nurse Alex is there. She walks over to the window and suddenly one of those Nazi demon wolf men attack Alex and stab her. Classic dream within a dream. Holy shit. Eventually while recovering in the hospital, David is visited by the ghost of Jack. Jack's face and neck are horribly disfigured from the attack. He says that on that night, they were attacked by a werewolf. David is in disbelief, thinking he's just having another nightmare, but not this time. Jack says because he was attacked by the lichen, he could not move on. He's forced to wander in limbo until the werewolf's bloodline is destroyed. He also tells David that since he survived the attack, he has been infected and that eventually he will turn into a monster and kill. Jack urges his friend to end his life before he hurts anyone and subjects them to this horrible fate. David starts to freak out at this news and he calls for the nurse and Jack is gone. At first, I thought this couldn't actually be David's friend, Jack, because there's no way his friend would tell him to die. But the more the movie goes on, you realize that Jack is really trying to help David. There's no cure and he will inevitably kill and subject those victims to the horror of limbo. And worse, what if he creates another werewolf? David was only scratched by the werewolf as far as I could notice. So to be infected, you don't have to be bitten any wound will do. David is finally released from the hospital after three weeks, and after making a bit of a romantic connection with Nurse Alex, she invites him to stay at her place for a while and the two hit it off. Dr. Hirsch from the hospital decides to go to the slaughtered lamb himself to ask some questions because a lot of things aren't adding up. When David first arrived in the hospital, the doctor found it strange that David's wounds had already been dressed and cleaned before he even got to the hospital, and he never got to see the body of Jack Goodman. Most people seem to think David might be hysterical or traumatized from the event, but the doctor isn't 100% sure. After all, he does seem perfectly fine. Dr. Hirsch arrives at the slaughtered lamb to the same warm welcome that David and Jack got. The doctor tries to ask some questions about the night David was attacked, but they're not talking. When he goes to leave, he notices one of the patrons outside. This man tries to tell the doctor what really happened, but someone else from the town sees them and tells him not to tell him anything. The doctor is now worried that the town believes in the werewolf curse, and now David might too. So currently, the doctor thinks that David might be suffering from some kind of delusion fed into by the people of the town, like they're all suffering from mass hysteria. You change. You That's enough! Alex goes to work and David is left alone at her apartment. Now that David has the lycanthropy curse, animals seem to treat him as a threat. It's often said that animals can sense spirits or evil. This is the first full moon for David. He is listening to some music and reading a book when suddenly he begins to yell out in agony and grabs his head. The transformation doesn't start slowly. It goes zero to a hundred. He then yells out on burning up and starts to rip his clothes off. The first symptom of the transformation seems to be a rapid rise in body temperature and a splitting headache. Next, his hands begin to stretch and elongate. Hair starts to grow all over his body, and then his feet change shape. All the while, hearing stretching, bones moving and cracking, along with David's horrible screams. It's also a really interesting choice to have this calm music playing in the background while possibly the most horrifying werewolf transformation ever takes place. It's like what's happening is so terrifying you don't even need the added ambience of creepy music. 
I also like when David is in the middle of this, he says, I didn't mean to call you meatloaf, Jack. Even in this moment, David still has a sense of humor. At this point, David's teeth have become sharp and his torso grows quite a bit in length. The eyes turn yellow and the snout extends, and you can even see a bit of blood in the mouth when this happens. Nice touch. When the full transformation is complete, David is completely unrecognizable. He has grown to almost twice his original size and he has the head of a wolf. And these werewolves walk on all fours like a true wolf. The sound design for the movie is great. The sounds the like and make are visceral and scary. David leaves the apartment and finds his first two victims, a couple named Harry and Judith. At this time, the doctor is just returning to London and tells Alex about what he found in East Proctor, so the two try to phone David, but there's no answer. David is still out hunting. He kills three more people by the river. David then goes into the subway station, or the tube station, and kills one more man. He tries to escape, but it's no use. The next morning, David wakes up in the wolf's den at the London Zoo, and the wolves seem to pay him no mind. He is naked and has absolutely no memory of what happened the night before. He quickly leaves the zoo and tries to find some clothes. He makes it back to Alex's apartment, but soon after, Dr. Hirsch calls. Alex says that he seems to be fine, but the doctor insists that he comes to the hospital immediately. Sometimes werewolves are very weak after a transformation, but David seems to be the opposite. After the full moon, he seems to be in a great mood and full of energy. While on the way to the hospital, David learns that six people were murdered last night. This causes him to have a panic attack as he's coming to the realization. Jack was telling the truth and he was responsible for killing those people. He stops the cab and runs away. Alex goes after him, but he's hysterical and begins trying to get himself arrested. He confesses the murders to an officer, but he's acting so strangely the man probably just thinks he's crazy. David's trying to get arrested so he'll get locked up and then he won't be able to hurt anyone else. He tells Alex that he loves her, but she has to stay away from him. Later that day, David is walking the streets when he stops at a payphone. He calls his house in America and finds that only his younger sister is home. He makes her promise that she will tell the rest of the family he loves them. After David hangs up, he pulls out his Swiss army knife and puts it to his wrist. He knows he should do it, but he can't. That's when he sees Jack appear again, standing in front of an adult movie theater, and he gestures David to come inside. You can see behind Jack is a movie poster for an adult film. See You Next Wednesday is a reoccurring gag in many of John Landis's films. I found this picture on Reddit made by GREAT. It shows some of the appearances of See You Next Wednesday movie posters. It seems to always appear as a different movie, but with the same name. The line comes from 2001 A Space Odyssey. And See You Next Wednesday was one of John Landis's first screenplays he wrote as a teenager that never got made into a movie. David then follows Jack into the theater and sits down. What you gonna say, I told you so? If I were still alive, I probably would. Jack is now much more decayed than when we first see him. I guess while people are trapped in limbo, their body continues to rot. I wonder if eventually they would rot to nothing. Maybe that's why there's not a lot more ghouls bothering David. Even though Jack is a little worse for wear, David is glad to see him. He needs help. Jack introduces him to the six people he murdered as the wolf. They are now also trapped in limbo. One man says something interesting. He says we are not dead. We are undead until the curse is lifted. One question I had while re-watching this movie for this video was shouldn't there be an army of ghouls? Jack was the only ghoul at the start. So does that mean that prior to Jack, no werewolf in that bloodline had ever killed someone before? I guess it's possible since the town seemed to be pretty careful and we don't know how long the curse has been around. But it's more likely there are other ghouls, they just don't appear to David because they don't know him or don't care anymore. Who knows? Jack does say something offhanded about talking to the dead before, so I'm guessing that's how we learned about the curse and how to end it. David agrees that Jack was right and he doesn't want to kill anyone else. Jack seconds that and again urges David to end his life. David asks, how should I do it? Do I need silver bullets? The ghosts laugh at this. I'm guessing they laugh because they know silver doesn't work. This scene may be one of the best in the movie. It perfectly blends horror and comedy and the effects used here are great. It's also a pretty morbid scene in the movie. After David asks how to end his life, 
His victims begin to suggest different methods to end his life one by one, so calmly. I remember this scene surprising me the first time I watched it. Right. Yes, you just put the gun to your forehead and pull the trigger. But if you put it in your mouth, you'd be sure not to miss. While David's in the theater, the moon rises again. David begins to turn and a security guard hears the noise and approaches. He's fully turned and the werewolf proceeds to kill everyone in the theater. He seemed to turn a little quicker this time. Possibly each time a werewolf turns, the transformation becomes easier. I love this close-up of the new claws splitting through his fingernails. Great idea. A police officer goes into the theater and turns on his flashlight. He finds the floor littered with mutilated bodies. All the while, you can hear the audio of an adult movie playing. The officer walks down the aisle and comes upon David eating someone. The officer hightails it out of there and locks the door. He shouts to get back, there's a monster in there, and to get the rifles. Just as the constable arrives, the werewolf breaks through the door and rips his head off. The werewolf is free on the packed streets of London and chaos ensues. Cars are crashing into each other, running people over, other people are screaming, running, and the wolf is trying to attack. A car drives into this bus, causing a guy to fly out the window and then get run over. It's like morbid slapstick comedy, but it's great. This werewolf looks really interesting and unique. Its face has a strange quality I can't put my finger on, but it's freaky. Dr. Hirsch hears the news about the supposed wild animal sighting. He informs Alex and the two fear the worst. David. They hurry to find David and see the police have him trapped in an alleyway with guns trained on him. Alex and the doctor arrive and push their way through the crowd to get to David. They are of course unaware that he's actually a werewolf though. Alex gets through before the doctor and rushes past the men with guns toward David. She is confronted with his horrific visage but tells him that she loves him. And for a moment, the face of the creature seems to comprehend what Alex said, but only for a moment. The creature suddenly snarls and tries to leap at Alex but the police shoot David just in time, killing him. Considering the werewolf in the beginning and David were killed with regular guns, I think we can safely assume that you don't need silver to kill these werewolves. And you really have to give it up for these guys. They perfectly shot around Alex from all the way down the alley without hitting her. Impressive. When the doctor and the police run over to Alex, David's body has returned back to its human form, just like the man from the beginning. I wonder if the doctor actually got to see David was really a werewolf. Presumably the reports in the killing would be evidence enough. But he was stuck in the crowd and when he got to David, he was human again. However, I do think in the end the doctor realized that David was telling the truth and probably wished he could have helped him. With David being dead, that means that the werewolf's bloodline has ended and all of David's victims and any other victims from previous werewolves would all be free now. One big question this movie leaves is how did the first werewolf get cursed? Was the werewolf from the beginning the first? Probably not. I'm guessing he was also just a victim of a lichen attack. The townspeople seem to kill the beast pretty easily, which leaves the question, were they letting it live? My guess is that it was a member of their small town and they didn't want to kill him, but they had no choice when some outsiders showed up. That's my video about an American werewolf in London one of the best werewolf movies ever. Everything in this movie from the music, the sound design, the practical effects, and the actors is a perfect fit. It created a unique film that still holds up over 40 years later. There was a sequel that came out in 1997 called An American Werewolf in Paris. This film was a flop in the box office and not liked by critics, but some people still enjoy it. If there's any other movies or TV shows you want me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. I always like going through your suggestions. If you enjoyed, leave a like, and maybe subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.